And Jesus said, When thou art invited to a wedding, sit not down in the first place. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Lord Jesus today desires us to be detached and humble. This is his main message to us. Detached especially from honors and pleasures of this world. So as to be more in tune with the things of heaven. Humbled in regards to the world, but exalted in the love of God. Today, as also the church remembers the birthday of the Blessed Virgin, as today is we celebrate her birthday, it will be a lot of air in our lungs to blow out 2,037 candles. But we shouldn't laugh because the Blessed Virgin is young and strong and more alive than anybody in this whole world right now inhabiting this earth. So we shouldn't make fun of her age. We should actually have great, great veneration for her. The Blessed Virgin, she's alive. And we all have birthdays from one time to another. Today, one of the guests has a birthday. Next Tuesday, another guest has a birthday. So we all have birthdays coming around. And what a great topic to reflect on on your birthday or the Blessed Mother's birthday, what our Lord teaches us today in the Gospel. Detachment from all things. We should rejoice when we celebrate our birthday because we're one year closer to heaven. One year closer to heaven. Time and eternity we must think and ponder. So I'm going to give a little bit of a sermon about the essence of the detachment of spirit, which is very important. I think in my last assignment, some of the younger sisters were probably tired of me. This, because this was a very important theme that I kept going back over and over again. The young sisters, this is something that your beginning of your religious life is worth noting that detachment of spirit is so important and it's not our work alone it's the work of the Holy Ghost within us so if we're called to a very special life with Christ uh, we have to excel in this foundational principle of religious life the detachment from all created things especially ourselves and this is the important thing I know it's hard, but we have to make tremendous efforts united to God's grace because our Lord calls for it today in the gospel. Don't take the first place. Take the last place so that you can be exalted to the first place, but not by your choosing, but by the Lord's choosing. He was in charge of the banquet. He was in charge of the nuptial vows of your religious life. He will call you to himself at due time. So the essence of detachment that we are called to by virtue of our baptism and also by virtue of our total consecration to the sacred heart of Jesus and religion is the following things. The heart must be free from inordinate attachments to self or creatures. It's clear that the heart cannot love God with all its strength when it's divided between God and self or between God and creatures. Remember, we only have one heart. We don't have two hearts walking around with two hearts. There'll be too much blood in the body, so you'll die. So you just have to have one heart. We <laughs> have one heart. And we have one will. And so... God is a little zealous and a little jealous about that. He wants that one heart and one will. And so we have to give it to him. We have to give it to him. But, but placed in this valley of tears, placed in this plethora of so many options and so many appearances and so many things. Remember that great Ignatian principle 
May I discover the only purpose of my life to praise, reverence, and serve our Lord and thus save my soul. And every creature must bring me to this end and whatever creature separates me and proves a hindrance to that goal, may I emphatically and courageously rid myself of it. Grant me holy indifference, my Lord, so I may not prefer honors to, honors to dishonors. May I not prefer riches to poverty. May I not prefer Comforts to painful toils and labors. Oh, sisters, too bad you're not Jesuits, because I would go off on a lot more on this. This is, but we should not go along in that reflection. But it's so true. It's so true how we have to form our hearts early on in our religious life to form that heart. It can't be a suction cup all kinds of emotions and things and memories and resentments and grudges. It has to be suction cupless where we don't have a suction cup. We have to just let things slide. We have to let it slide. Let it go. Let go. Total detachment and radical renunciation are demanded of every attachment which is not conformable, get this, to the will of God or which is not consistent with the love of God. So yes, we can have great holy affection from our, for our fellow sisters and holy religion. We can enjoy life and smell a flower and enjoy it and thank God for it. But all these things, as long as it's in accord with God's will, that God is the one that it's at the center of all these experiences of ours. So total detachment doesn't consist in a total separation from material things. For this would be impossible for us in this life. We would die if we didn't have material things. Whatever surroundings one finds himself in or herself, his heart must be ordered toward God and use everything solely for his great honor and glory. I would like to just repass real quickly. It'll be very quickly because we're not Carmelites. Uh, but the rules of detachment according to St. John of the Cross for this will give us great help to orient ourselves. The will needs to be inclined to God and needs to be trained in pain, says the mystic Spanish of the 16th century. Not to the easiest things. Our wills cannot be inclined to the easiest things of life. It cannot... They must also, but rather they should be inclined to the hardest things. Not to the tastiest things. Not to the things that give us most pleasure. Not to boundless rests. Not to unbridled consolations. Not to the most honorable and prestigious. Not to a desire, not to desire a plethora of things, but mostly to nothing. This was from St. John of the Cross, his great work called The Ascent of Mount Carmel. By this work, the soul will become accustomed, get this, gradually to subduing inordinate desire for pleasure. At times, we must do what is repugnant to nature as is required by duty toward God. And St. John of the Cross, finishing off this thought, asked for two courses of action. First, decision and generosity. To decide and to be generous. If someone does not have the courage to renounce self and everything, he will never be detached from all the things and thus never become fully united to God and love. And then the second course of action, he says, order and discretion, he says. 
We do not expect to do always the most difficult thing, he says, or the most painful thing, or the most tiring thing. You know, like for example, if you want to be holy, knocking on Sister Superior's door at 4.30 in the morning, oh, Sister, I'm trying to be a saint, so I'm staying up at 4, until 4. Go to sleep, Sister, you have 50 more minutes before matins. <laughs> Not even a superior will expect us to do the most tiring thing ever. No, we're not expected to do that. We have to have this discretion and order. It's because this would be impossible for us on earth. First, because of the circumstances of our life in which we live. Secondly, because even the physical constitution that we possess, you know, which always needs a bit of relaxation, but St. John of the Cross does ask that we be disposed for the choice of what is opposed to our natural and disordered tendencies. That's what we have to declare war on. Resolve to self-renunciation in all things so that when the opportunity does arise, when the blows start to rain down upon us, when the fight starts to reach us, when we enter the fray of battle, perhaps not even by our own choosing, then we can do so without being hindered by our natural repugnances because we have been trained. When we do have to allow for some relaxation because of expediency or duty, we do so with selfless detachment of spirit and holy indifference. That is to say, a will that is disengaged and serene, aloof from the pleasures that we are encountering in them. So my dear sisters, this is why um, we're having a lot of problems in the church in today's culture because they don't understand this thing about obstacles and sin. And so people are trying to build these castles in the, in the air, you know, plucking on guitars, singing hallelujah, um, feeling good, uh, making sure we smile to each other, always nice to each other, which will be good and helpful, but it's not a foundation. The foundation is in getting tough. Teniendo piel dura, as we say in Spanish, having tough skin. We have to form calluses to be tough. So as we receive communion today, some of us, and unite our hearts with the most sacred heart of Jesus, may we hear those words from his most disciplined lips. Our Lord is disciplined. He was a tough man. And listen what he says. Friend, Go up higher, then shalt thou have glory before them that sit at the table with thee. Obviously, supposing that you took the lowest place in your daily life, our Lord will call you to that. Come higher, Sister Henrietta. Come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.